Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel and thanks for logging on. Today we're discussing the Patek Philippe Calatrava 5127G in white gold with opaline dial. You can see and you can purchase this automatic winding center second Calatrava on our website. Subscribe to our YouTube channel if you enjoy these videos and please click on the card in the upper right hand corner of the screen at any time during this video to see our full sales listing for this watch with additional accessories included in the sale, high resolution images for your desktop and naturally complete pricing details for this 51 127G. Now this is a watch that debuted in 2005, bowed out after 2012, succeeded the 5107 and preceded the current 5227. The watch is classically styled, although it is a different breed of Calatrava, not all historically featuring a date, crown guards, or center seconds. This is considered to be a more contemporary take on Patek Philippe's immortal dress watch. Now it is right sized, that is it's not a 33 to 35 millimeter petite vintage dress watch nor is it oversized. At 37 millimeters across the round of the case, not including crown and guards, it's handsome on almost any wrist, and with a span across the wrist of approximately 45.8 millimeters, you can wear this watch easily on a wrist as small as 13 centimeters in circumference with good security and proportion. Likewise, you can wear it on a very large wrist because as a Patek Philippe Calatrava in precious metal, it has a presence, a stance, and a gravitas that can hold its own against a tree trunk forearm. The watch is relatively slim, however. 9.1 millimeters thick means it easily slides underneath a dress cuff, and you can see how the, the bezel itself is generously domed and curved to allow a tight dress cuff to slide over the side of the watch. That's one of the most obvious aesthetic differences between this and the 5107 that preceded it. That watch has a rather severe, flat, conical bezel. This one has a more sensuous and voluptuous domed and curved bezel. Now the timepiece is hefty on the wrist. In white gold you know you're getting a premium product and I prefer luxury watches that aren't unnervingly light so heft has never bothered me. The strap is upscale alligator leather in black with a monotone stitch and folded edges on the underside you can see calfskin supple. This is a Patek Philippe factory strap with a Patek Philippe factory spade style white gold pin buckle. You can see with beautiful fastening and high polish it's nicely executed, simple, low in profile and it is a classical aesthetic to match the classical proportions and dimensions of this watch. Now the dial itself is what Patek Philippe describes as opaline and it's somewhere between silver and a sort of eggshell. It has a little bit of an off-white tinge to it. It's not a, a severe metallic like you'll find, for instance, on a radial sunburst grain. It's warm and that little tinge of color, something off-white, something almost like eggshell, that eggshell or vanilla gives it more character than it would have were this a cold grayscale silver dialed watch and it is certainly not that. There's a perceptible warmth here, something that communicates to my heart and seems to bypass my mind, but there's plenty of intellectual appeal on the reverse of the case. Let's start with the basics though here. We have white gold hands, counterweighted lancet seconds with Dauphine style faceted hours and minutes. One of the easy to spot distinctions between this and the subsequent 5227 is the smaller size of the Patek Philippe Marquis at 12 o'clock as well as the use of faceted white gold dart style indices here rather than the trapezoidal indices used on the 5227. Now there's a white gold frame for the date and the date does feature a quick set for rapid cycling. There's a small dimple style minutes and seconds track outboard adding detail interest to the dial turning it over so you can see the curved peaks of the crown guard and now the screwed in case back. You're gazing upon Patek Philippe Caliber 315. This watch was made in two series from 2005 till approximately 2008. Discontinued early in 2009, the watch returned a little over one model year later. The difference between the two is that before the discontinuation of the first generation, you had the Caliber 315, 21,600 vibration per hour movement, center rotor as ever, with the Geneva hallmark, as you can see on this train bridge. The Poisson de Genève was supplanted after 2010 by the Patek Philippe interlocking family or house seal. Now, there is no difference in finish. They're both to the highest standard and the finest tradition of Geneva watchmaking, but the older standard is more romantic. It also has a different cadence. Against the ear, this one beats six times per second as opposed 
close to eight times per second, but they both feature a center rotor and a Gyromax style balance. Now the Gyromax is a free sprung architecture, which is to say there's no mobile stud index or Edicron. So it better takes and holds a precise regulation and then retains it even in the face of potential vibrations or bumps on the wrist. That's the advantage of a free sprung architecture. Patek's been doing it since the early 1950s. Now you'll also note the standard of finish is outstanding with linear Cote de Genève richly textured across the bridges perfectly aligned and circular Cote de Genève with an engraved Calatrava cross on the golden winding mast. Also note the attention to detail with a tight engine turned perlage overlapping on the base plate below the balance but also at the center of the winding mast. Beautiful wonderfully executed, tight and even. This is done by hand on special equipment. You'll also note that the standard of finish on the screws is what's known as black polish or poly noir, the highest standard of optical finish. You'll note as I move the screws through the light, they turn bright silver and black and it's that single or monodirectional optical quality. They only reflect the light in one direction that causes them to be perceived as black from many angles and that's where the phrase black polish comes from. You'll also note within all of the jewel countersinks a beautiful mirrored shine hand polished. The same treatment applied on glage to the edge of every bridge and cock. You can see them lighting up rounded mirrored hand executed from every angle. This is truly rare and exceptionally time consuming and it's why hand finishing could add up to 35, even 40 percent to the value of watches finished to Geneva Seal standard. That's where you want to put your money. A handsome watch, it appeals to both sides of the brain. The intellect, it also appeals to the heart. This is the Patek Philippe 5127G in white gold.